guess which community has the highest rates of single parenthood in this country? It's black communities. Now, do you say that's purely racism or that's because of the circumstances with which you're born in? If we come back then to sort of your reaction to the Black Lives Matter movement. The organisation is an abomination, right? They're, they're, you know, where has all the money gone? The founder has been found to have spent a lot of BLM donations on houses and all of these things. I mean, the actual organisation is a complete abomination. I'm Hardeep Matharu. I'm the editor of Byline Times. And in recent years, I've been exploring identity, what it means to us personally and as a society. Today, I'll be sitting down with Esther Kraku, a conservative commentator and columnist who's been very critical of the Black Lives Matter movement and outspoken in her praise for how Britain is handling racial issues. Esther, so you've written quite critically about the Black Lives Matter movement and you've you know, received quite a critical response in turn. What are your issues with it? Um, I must be honest and say that a lot of the sort of <laughs> vitriol I was getting was from black Americans. Um, who didn't sort of know me or anything about me or knew where I lived or anything like that. And they kind of hit me with this typical, you've never faced racism, so you don't understand what it feels like. And I'm just like, actually, yes, I have. Mm. <laughs> on many occasions, I just don't choose to tattoo on my body because, quite frankly, the world doesn't care. Um, one of my biggest issues with the Black Lives Matter movement was the ideology behind it. I actually fell into it by accident. I went on the BLM website to donate money. So the one that I went on was talking about sort of just basically Marxist ideology, drawing um, from black communities in Brazil and all of these things. And I'm just like, wait, what are you talking about? I thought this was a movement based on what's happening in the US, right? They were sort of, they didn't make, make any mention of Africa, right? If you're going to have a conversation about black people and not mention where most of black people are, right? If you're not going to mention the, the issue of police brutality in a place like Nigeria, for instance, or all these things, I don't really... I don't feel like that movement is aligned with me. Mm. And I've actually had this conversation with um, some very intelligent friends of mine, which says, you know, we used to live in a country where the idea of fairness was protecting mm. the most vulnerable in society. You know, that starts with law and order, right? But then you have, you know, like for instance, um, one of the uh, grooming gang leaders was actually known to, um, that was, was a welfare uh, counselor in uh, Northern Manchester, I think, you know, and it's like, why did this happen? It's because we, we've actually abandoned this idea of taking care of the, the most vulnerable in society because we're shunning law and order, which is the fundamental aspect of that. So that made me feel very uncomfortable because I just thought, actually, you're, in, you're not in tune with what black people really need, especially in this yeah. country. So what do you think, if Black Lives Matter doesn't have it right, what do you think are some of the ways that you can genuinely advance uh, the cause for black people in this country? Because there is, yeah. you know, uh, obviously people have their individual experiences, but racism is still out there. No, I do agree with that, but I, I'm very conscious of saying that my experience is not everyone's experience, right? When, when you say, how do we sort of advance the interests of black people in this country, like I think we should do with everyone, I think it's having open and genuine conversation. One mm. of the things that disgusted me about the whole BLM situation was, I'm a black person like you, I have views just like you, but I'm being shunned out of the conversation because I didn't come with a BL, with BLM tattooed on my left arse cheek. We all have the same interests, we all want to see things better for everyone, but I don't tow a certain line or I'm not, I don't have a particular experience that you agree with. So that's, that's not valid. I don't think that's fair. Um, I've often said that a lot of sort of the issues with social mobility and class issues in this country um, and um, poverty in this country has to do with class just as much as it has to do with how you're born, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's purely down to racism in the same way that you would have in somewhere like southern US, for instance. You know, if you grow up in this country with, uh, in a single parent household, your chances of growing up in child poverty shoots up from three in 10 to one in two, right? Guess which community has the highest rates of single parenthood in this country? It's black communities. Now, do you say that's purely racism or that's because of the circumstances with which you're born in? And I, I make this point, not because I'm trying to, you know, disparage against these people, but that is something that we have to look into, right? Because I also reject this idea that if you grow up poor, you're, you're more likely to become a delinquent or whatever. There are people that grow up in poorer sort of societies that grow up in, stable family two-parent households that don't turn to a life of crime because there's a sense of identity and community there that keeps people grounded and you yeah know, that that's what that's that's the dream right to grow up in that stable household and to have the aspirations and be able to move up in society that's what people want you know the level of attainment mm. in Indian in communities in higher education yeah. for instance far away is even white British people yeah. and these are things that I often say we should look to other communities within this country as to emulate certain aspects of you know, the things that they're doing right. I do think culture is, is, is a very sensitive topic, but I also think 
this whole idea, I think we, we, we have a tendency to make everything seem like a monolith, right? Mm. So even when we talk about black people in this country, mm. they, well, they're black people that are Caribbean, of Caribbean yes. backgrounds, and they're black Africans. And sometimes you look at the sort of certain figures and statistics, and there are still quite a few disparities, like single, I mean, single mm. motherhood rates in Caribbean communities are, I think, 61%, in black African communities, I think it's around 40%. You know, that's still, you know, a 20% difference. Yeah, it's I, not this homogenous exactly. group. People talk about black people or people exactly. of color or I think minorities. There's so much diversity within that. Yeah. I mean, if we come back then to sort of your reaction to the Black Lives Matter movement and then the reaction you got yeah. when you were critical about it, but did you feel that, did you feel the organization recognized you as an individual? Oh, of course not. But that wasn't, yeah. the, the, the organization is an abomination, right? They're, they're, you know, where has all the money gone? The founder has been found to have spent a lot of BLM donations on houses and all of these things. I mean, the actual organization is a complete abomination. Sort of BLM in the US led to a summer of riots and obscene higher levels of crime that we wouldn't normally see, right? Because they were saying tensions were higher and stuff like that. But I'm like, this is not a movement that is trying to benefit anyone. This is a movement that's riding the wave of heightened passions and tensions, and it's leading us, if we keep letting it fester, to our destruction. There is, a, there is room for a conversation to be had, and I've had many conversations. I've mm. been to conferences, I've spoken to you know, um, people with PhDs and, and lecturers at universities, and the, the amount of common ground we have is incredible. And I just think it's sad that sort of this movement was able to ride this wave of of hostility for as long as it mm. has and has made it look like we're also polarizing. I argue with people that I disagree with on a daily basis, mm. right? And I think it's very primitive to assume that once the cameras are turned off, we're just boxing each other. That's not the case yeah. at all. And so do you think, when we look at the ra race in this country, mm. the debate in recent years has become extremely polarized. Yeah. So it's either perhaps people who are uh, you know, very vocal about the problems, and there are problems, mm. um, as there are in other countries, but there are still problems in Britain about race. Um, I mean, And I think that's the thing. Uh, focusing on individual experiences, I think I have a bit of a problem with, just because we all have individual experiences. Which ones do you focus on more? Mm. I do think that the idea of painting a rosy picture is very sinister, and I, 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 I've seen elements of that in the media. But I, I think the, the issue is, are we talking about structural racism or racists within the country? I do think they're racist in this country, which I've experienced, my family's experienced, mm. and I, but I don't think this country is systemically racist. But I also find it very disingenuous, the people that speak about these issues, when you know, ch the, China, the CCP made uh, one of the, I think, you know the Star Wars release in China mm. that they airbrushed the black actor out of? That is horrific, that's heinous. Look at the number of black African players that go and play in Russia or in, in, East, um, or in China that face racism. Look at sort of how Africans were treated when the, the COVID-19 pandemic first hit in China and they were, they were being blamed for the spread of the virus. I actually saw that firsthand. Mm, mm. And I've, I've seen messages and people that were deported for speaking out on WhatsApp groups and all of that. You know, for me, that is, I, f I feel like the heart of the issue, right? They're placed in, this, in the world that are so blatantly racist, it's not even funny, right? But we don't have those conversations, but we're talking about stuff like, oh, let's, let's, let's paint the, the UK as a systemically racist country because this, this, that, and the other, when they're actually genuine conversations that can be had where you can look at other causes that don't have to do with this narrative around just systemic racism. I think it's lazy. It's lazy, the polarization right? polarization is it's lazy. It's lazy. And it's, at least yeah. have a conversation and about it's, it. And I guess it's the complexity of everyone, whether it's individual experiences or community's experiences, is you know, elements of, as we're talking about, you know, racism, racist in this country, maybe some systemic barriers too, um, and, and some really good experiences. It was, it was really interesting. Just before you go, Byline TV started about two years ago to have the conversations that we aren't seeing elsewhere in the mainstream press and to investigate the stories that the established media don't want to touch. Now, we're a small but dedicated team. You know, we do it all on a shoestring, but we really do love bringing you the content that we do, whether that's our live Live shows, it's our short form documentaries, or going behind the scenes with our Q and A's and learning more from our producers about how you actually run a TV channel. So if you do like what we do, it's a really easy to support our work. Please just head over to byline.tv forward slash join, hit the join button, become a member and join us here in the Byline TV community. We can change the media, it's in our hands.